Cool. Can you hear me okay? Yeah? yeah? Great. Cool. Uh, yeah, my name's Ryan. Uh, uh, I work at HackerU. Uh, I'm the CTO there. Uh, how many people have heard of HackerU before? How many people are really enjoying that game out there that we have? The invisibility hidden. If you haven't played that yet, it's going to be open. I mean, skip my talk. Go play the game. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so at HackerU, we, we help people uh, who come in with little to no knowledge of programming and help them kind of find new careers. Uh, super satisfying job. I love it. Uh, I also wrote a little book and did some videos, uh, Let's Learn ES6. Uh, like February 2016, uh, a book company, I started putting out videos in January, a book company contacted me and was like, do you want to write a book uh, about ES6? And I was like, why would you even ask me? And then I was like, no. And then I wrote it by myself, and I don't know if that was a good idea or not. Uh, Jerry's still out on that one. Uh, but Let's Learn ES6, if you Google that, you can find some great videos on that kind of stuff. And I started this new little series called Let's Code Along as well. Uh, that's me on the left, the top. Tiger? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, wait, no, that was no, that's the right. No, that joke failed because I'm on the left. <laughs> Let me try that one again. Uh, no, just kidding. Um, anyways, this one's a little fun series. It's just like about just taking an idea, taking some technology, and let's just like build something uh, from scratch. Uh, definitely planning to do some more of that stuff now that sort of all my talks are done for the year. Cool. Uh, so I wanted to talk about streaming. Uh, how many people have used streams before? How many people have never used streams or are new to streams? Cool. So a bit more people are new to streams. That's good. Uh, because uh, I wanted to do this thing. So uh, one other thing that I do is I help organize Node School Toronto. How many people have been to that before? A couple of people here. Cool. If you have never been to that before, Node School Toronto is really cool. You kind of come. It's usually at Shopify. Uh, you just get to, uh, it's a free work uh, period. You can work with mentors to help learn something that you want to learn. You can just come work on anything you want. Uh, but one of the modules uh, is uh, the Stream Adventures module, so streams on in Node. Uh, and I kind of wanted to like, dive a little bit deeper into that and kind of get like a history and an understanding of them. So uh, what is a stream? Uh, a stream is basically a system that provides uh, data over time. Uh, think of it as like a conveyor belt. So uh, uh, items are being processed one at, a, uh, one at a time rather than in large batches. So I did some really cool graphics. I'm also uh, a BAA in illustration, so this is some really good stuff. But basically, imagine you have all these boxes and you need to wrap them. If you uh, weren't using streams to do this, let's say, you somehow would just do them all at once, right? You take these, how many are there, six boxes here, and just wrap them all at once. That'd be kind of hard and like really super labor intensive. But in like a streaming system, you have all these boxes, you take one, you wrap it, you put it in the pile. You take one, you wrap it, you put it in the pile. So it's a little bit more efficient in that you can kind of do them uh, in smaller batches. The history of streams is pretty interesting, so uh, it's not a, a relatively new thing. Um, there's a paper, uh, or a memo, I should say, written in 1964 by this man, uh, Doug McEl McElroy. McElroy? Uh, in it, he was just kind of like talking about some of the, the constraints and stuff that he was working with, and he said that we should have some way of connecting programs like garden hose. Uh, screw in another segment when it becomes necessary to massage data in another way. This is the way of I.O. So we all know hoses are hard to deal with. Oh. <laughs> He's never going to get it. As long as you watch this, he'll never get that. Um, so this is really interesting because uh, this idea was around a, a while ago, and it's, uh, it didn't really come up until a little bit later. There are a whole bunch of types of streams. Uh, we're actually going to go through all of these. There's readable streams. Uh, writable streams, duplex streams, which are like uh, probably the weirdest ones to deal with, and transform streams. So a readable stream is something like reading from a file. So uh, a readable stream would be something that is producing data for us. Uh, we'll see, we'll take a look at Node and, and see how that works in a second. A writable stream is sort of the opposite. So it's maybe something like writing to a file. Uh, it's something that's going to be able to consume data. Duplex streams are quite interesting because duplex streams are like two streams that are kind of like stuck together. They have a, a independent read and writes, so there's like two together. Uh, this would be something like a socket connection, uh, so it's bi-directional. So TCP connections, and I'll show you an example a little bit later, would be a good example of this. There's a constant connection, and you can read from it and write to it. <laughs> this is a good example of a duplex stream, uh, except it's just not connected right now. Uh, yeah. I don't know what they're doing. Like, why are they on the ground like that? 
Uh, transform streams are pretty neat as well. So they're similar to a duplex stream, uh, except they can take input uh, and they can produce output. So they have a readable and a writable end to them. Uh, but like their name says, they kind of take data in, transform it, and then send it back out. And this is really interesting, uh, because you've maybe seen this before. How many people are familiar with Gulp? Cool. So Gulp, not the hot buzzword uh, build tool it is. It was like two, three, four years ago. It's no Webpack, but uh, Gulp kind of works on this streaming idea. Uh, with Gulp, so this is like a kind of like simplified version of a, a, a Gulp task that I had somewhere. Uh, but what you do is you give it a, a, a destination. So the Gulp source is a readable stream. You give it a file path, and it starts reading that file. And this pipe method is used to sort of like keep passing that data along. And it passes it into these different uh, functions, like the SAS function, the post CSS function, uh, until you finally get to your destination. And all of these things are uh, kind of examples of transform streams. So Gulp SAS, for example, you take this uh, readable stream and you pipe it through Gulp SAS, which is a transform stream, which is going to take uh, one input and transform it and uh, produce a different output with it. We'll actually see how this goes. Uh, there's some terminology I wanted to talk about as well with streams. Uh, this is the idea of a buffer, uh, a high watermark, a uh, sink, and what it means to flush something. It's not the toilet version, though. Uh, it could be, though. Uh, a buffer is basically just a, a temporary uh, uh, data storage. Uh, as you kind of start to consume data, uh, you need to store it somewhere temporarily before you act on it and then push it away. So uh, that's what a buffer is. And I can actually, I'll show you an example of a buffer a little bit later. Uh, this is really interesting because all of these um, uh, terms have this idea of uh, uh, these water analogies. So a high water mark, if you think about a pail, like a bucket, the high water mark is how, how, uh, what is the maximum you can fill that bucket? Uh, in this case, it would be what is the maximum level of data that can be consumed at a time? So you could have streams that you know, work on like you know, 10 bytes at a time or like 10 megabytes at a time. It's up to you to decide sort of like what you want to do. A sync is basically where that information is going to go. So what other object or uh, data source that information will go into? And then uh, if you ever hear the term like flush it, uh, basically just means that data has to get out of there. So maybe it is similar to a toilet. <laughs> so uh, one place you might end up working with streams and you're not entirely uh, uh, aware of it would be in Unix. So a lot of the Unix interface, uh, Unix commands, uh, are built on top of this stream system. When I started to do research for this uh, talk, I just kind of started Googling around, started like, doing some uh, search uh, into the history of streams, and I came upon this paper, a stream input output system, and I was like, cool, this is like a paper. It's written in 1984. It's going to be super helpful for me on this. Uh, and it wasn't like super. It's just basically how they implemented streams. But the very first paragraph, or the first two paragraphs in this paper really helped me understand, uh, because at this time, 1984, the Unix operating system, which I think was only running on about 40 computers uh, at the time, oh, I mean, right, uh, was, uh, or the version they talked about in the paper at least, was getting to a point where there was so many different protocols and so much uh, I.O. going around, they really needed to get this uh, uh, under control, and streams were starting to come into effect. So here's an example of code, uh, or code. This is a, a sort of a command you might write in uh, your terminal. Basically, you say git log, so it's going to print out all of your commit messages. We're using the, the pipe character, that straight up and down character. And we're saying, uh, pass that data to grep, grep for the name Ryan, and then pass it to the wc uh, command, which is basically the word count command. And dash l will give us the number of lines. And this is actually... Uh, uh, an imp uh, implementation of streams, because each one of these commands, each command in Unix has three different streams attached to it. The pipe character is how we kind of like uh, compose these all together, so we're able to take one uh, program's output, put it into another program's input, and kind of keep going along. Uh, and kind of like we saw with gulp, uh, and like we uh, kind of saw with that um, uh, bash command there, this allows us to actually take little programs and compose them together to do large tasks, right? So instead of taking one huge function or whatever to uh, pro, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of go through all of our data, we can kind of do this in little steps at a time. So uh, one thing we need to talk about is sort of this idea of standard input and standard output as well. Uh, so every command in Unix has three different types of data streams associated to them. Uh, there's the standard in, the standard out, and the standard error. 
By default, uh, the standard uh, out is always going to be your terminal window unless you like redirect it somewhere. Uh, standard in is usually what you're typing, uh, and the standard error will also go to that window, but it'll be a little bit different. So in this case, the git log command takes its standard output, sends it via the pipe character to greps standard in, and then it just kind of keeps piping it along like that. So it's connecting all of those uh, hoses together. This is where I take a break. It's a nice stream, I think. So uh, let's get into maybe some more uh, uh, practical uses of streams. Uh, how many people are familiar with Node? Nice. If you're not, you should go to Node School Toronto. Uh, maybe next October. Uh, this coming up October, not next October. <laughs> There's a really great uh, um, resource for streams, the Stream Handbook by Substack. If you don't know who Substack is, uh, uh, James Holiday, uh, just like a prolif prolific, that's a hard word, prolific uh, module uh, developer. And he has some really, really great resources for uh, streams. I'm actually going to show an example of duplex streams that I just uh, found from him through a um, video series I found somewhere. But in Node, uh, a place that you would commonly use a stream, or maybe you uh, would produce a stream, is with the FS module. So FS is the uh, file system module. And with that, we could create readable streams uh, and writable streams and all this kind of cool stuff. So really, really simply, uh, in this example here, we're just pulling in the FS module, and we're using the create read stream method. We're giving it a file path. This is a, a all of Moby Dick. Uh, you can find it, I think it's the Gutenberg website. You can find the entire text of the Moby Dick uh, book. And what I've done here is we're just pulling it in, and we're piping it to process.standard out. So every node script uh, process is like what process is currently running. And the standard out, in our case, if we're running it in the terminal, we'll just go straight to the terminal. Uh, if you've ever used the cat command in your terminal, this is exactly the same thing. You're saying, basically, concatenate this file and put it into my um, terminal window. In Node, instead of using, uh, obviously, the pipe character, we use the pipe method. Uh, and this is what allows us to put those connections together now. Uh, and we saw this with gulp, right? We had gulp source, and you just pipe all of these things together as you go. Again, this whole analogy of hoses, plumbing, toilets. OK, not the toilets so much, but um, another place, if you've ever written a server in Node, uh, that you would have encountered uh, two types of streams would be the HTTP, uh, HTTP module and the create server method. So with that, uh, HTTP.createServer, you give it a callback function. And that callback function has provided uh, two uh, parameters, a request object and a response object. And the request is a readable stream. So that's the request that's being made to your server. So you could act on that uh, however you wanted. And the res, or result, or sorry, response, is a writable stream. So you can actually, uh, typically, you kind of maybe do like res.send, and you just kind of send everything. But you can actually start piping data as quickly as you get it to the client again uh, to be consumed as quickly as possible. Let's take a look at a writable stream. Now, we're going to do a lot of Moby Dick in here, but I thought I would write a new classic. Uh, and this is a new classic I'm writing. So with a writable stream, we can use the FS module, and we can say create write stream, and we can give it a file name. So in this case, new classic.txt. And this is still in the edit phases, but uh, the air was chill that morning. You could feel it in the air. It's what we're going to start. It's the start of the thing. Ksenia's not into it, I feel like. It's OK. It's still in edit. It's still coming along. But this allows us to uh, basically uh, uh, create a file so the, the write stream is uh, uh, um, looking at this new text. And we're just like writing to it as we go. We call end here to say that we're done with it. Um, but this is really neat, because now we can actually, like, if we had a really long running or a lot of text we wanted to work with, we could actually just kind of write to this as we go instead of just shoving a whole document into it at once. Transform streams are where it gets a little bit more interesting. And this is where we're going to get into uh, streams that uh, look more like Gulp. So say we have something like this. We have Moby Dick again, uh, and we, have, uh, we want to pipe uh, Moby Dick into a function that basically makes it all uppercase. So somebody's just yelling Moby Dick at you <laughs> the whole time as you go. Uh, I've never read it. It looks very long. I don't want anybody yelling it at me. Uh, but 
This is uh, really interesting, because now we're taking a read stream, Moby Dick, the file, and we're passing it in as chunks. Again, remember, with streams, we're not taking all of the text and passing it in. We're passing it in uh, in these chunks of data, these buffers. Uh, we're passing it into our uppercaser, which I'll show you in a second, and then we're just putting it back out into standard out. Here's an example of what uh, a transform st uh, stream would look at. You don't really have to, to pay too much attention, but in Node, there's kind of these core stream modules. So there's the stream module, and then on it, there's transform, readable, uh, writable, uh, duplex, uh, duplex uh, and all that kind of stuff. And if you wanted to implement your own, you can implement an underscore transform method that gets three things, a chunk, which is uh, the buffer data, uh, the encoding, and then a next function. The next function is what you call when you want to, like once you've done your sort of processing, you call next, and you just kind of keep going along the stream. Basically, all we're doing here is we're taking uh, the chunk, making it a string, and we're calling to uppercase on it. We're pushing it into this. So this is going to refer to our sync at this point. The chunk is really interesting, because here's where we get into the buffer. So this is what the buffer looks like. This is what a chunk looks like. And this is a buffer for, hey there. Uh, it's basically a byte uh, a representation of all of our text. It's just bits and bytes all the way down. Um, yeah. Just going to let that play through one more time. So if we ran this code now, uh, you would see that somebody is yelling Moby Dick at us. I feel like somebody would also lose their voice. They'd get so hoarse just yelling Moby Dick. Also, if you try to search stream transform, you're going to get stream transformers the last night. I tried to watch it. I couldn't get a link that worked, though. <laughs> it was really hard. Uh, I thought it would be appropriate at the time, but it just did not work. Yeah. Anyways. Um, you're reading Moby Dick, though. You're transforming it. Somebody's yelling it at you. Maybe you just want to stop reading the word whale and you just want to see the emoji whale. So we can now start piping and connecting these things together. So we have, we're going to act on two different types of transform streams. So this one is a whale transform. Uh, basically, as the data comes in, it's just going to do a really simple regex uh, for the word whale and replace it with the whale emoji. Hopefully you see where this is going uh, in terms of like a SAS, where it's kind of going through and like transforming it, uh, just a little bit more uh, simply here. So again, we're going to require uh, our FS. We'll create a read stream, pass it through uppercaser, so we're yelling it. Then we pass it through something I'm calling whaler, and we're just replacing all of the, the term whale with a uh, whale emoji, of course. Really important uh, stuff. So if you run it, uh, it'll actually, again, concaten it all out, and uh, you can find that you got all those whales in there. It's actually kind of hard to see there. I apologize for that, but... The cool thing, though, is now we're getting something that looks a little bit like how Gulp works, uh, where we're taking bits of data and we're kind of transforming them as we go. On the top is a really simplified version of a Gulp task, uh, and on the bottom is sort of what we have going on. There are cool, sweet, super simple, uh, I don't even know what I would call it, if it's even a thing. But you can see how we're now able to compose, like Gulp, we're able to compose these sort of really intricate uh, Programs. I'd like to introduce Whaleit. I created a module. It's a transform stream you should go home and install. It's called Whaleit. You can simply uh, install it and turn all of your text into whales. I think the tagline <laughs> is, uh, have a whale of a time. I don't think that's the same. No, it's, yeah, it's fine. It's bad. Uh, duplex streams. So duplex streams are really interesting. Remember, duplex streams are uh, a, a stream that has uh, basically two streams stuck together. There's two independent read and write uh, streams. I'm just going to say thanks again to Substack because uh, I was trying to come up with some really good examples of this, and I just found an example, a very uh, a simple example, but an example of what this would look like. And I think this is actually in the, um, uh, the Node docs as well. But uh, the net module in Node creates a TCP connection, so that's a, a bi-directional connection. And when you do the create server method on that, you're given back a stream. And basically, this looks really weird, but we're saying stream.pipe stream. So we're taking this stream and we're piping it into itself. Uh, this would look like it would be an infinite loop potentially, uh, but it's smart enough to know that when it comes from one direction, it just stops at the other end. What this effectively creates is a uh, echo server. You send it some requests. So I'm using something called NCAT here to uh, just send some data to it as we go. You send it a request, and it'll just send you something back. 
the exact same thing back. Of course, we could compose this with your new favorite module, whale it, and any time the text comes in and the word whale appears, you probably just want to see a whale come back to you, right? So there's a little portion here where I say whaling, and I say oops because I think I spelt it wrong, and then I realize whaling is spelt right. There's just no E in it. No. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. That's cool. Again, the whole idea here is that uh, with streams, we're, we're, we're thinking about performance a bit more, right? We're not taking a huge chunk. I think the um, Moby Dick uh, file size is like 16 megabytes. We're not loading 16 megabytes into RAM and then performing some action on it. To, uh, on it. We're taking chunks of that, and we're performing on it as we go. Yeah. So what does this mean for the browser? So, now, uh, a lot more of this kind of idea is coming into the browser, uh, and it's uh, pretty neat. However, because it's still so new, the documentation is actually not uh, the best. MDN has some really good docs on it. However, uh, uh, it's one of those ones where if you've ever been on MDN, you kind of like, oh, I want to learn more about like, the reader, and you click it, and then it goes to like, a 404 page. They're not quite there yet. If you want to kind of like really dive into it, the spec documentation is the best place to go. They have some examples uh, and sort of where the implementation is at. Cool. So uh, what does a readable stream look like in the browser? Uh, how many people have used the fetch uh, function before? Cool, yeah, so fetch uh, with it, when you make a fetch request, the body property uh, itself is an implementation of a read stream. So you could do something like this. So this is now, uh, we're onto the client side. You could, uh, so this is inside of an async function. You could await fetch, get this response object, and you could do something like response.body.pipe2. So on the browser, they don't actually do .pipe, it's .pipe2, and then some sort of writable stream. So instead of just doing .pipe in the browser, they have pipe2 and pipe through. Uh, which is kind of nice because it's a pretty clear like what kind of action you're performing here. Uh, are we just piping the data to this and then it's probably going to end there? Or are we actually piping through a bunch of different uh, types of streams? Another thing we can do with that is we can get like a reader from it. The reader returns a promise when a chunk of data is available, so when some data has come back. Uh, and then we are given a value and a done uh, property. So the value would be uh, u uh, int 8 array. Uh, uh, that's just basically an array of uh, bits that we can decode into a string, similar to the buffer that we can decode into a string. Uh, and then the done uh, property would be true or false. Basically, has it read all of the data, true or false? I'll show you an example of that in a second. I wanted to come up with a really cool uh, demo for this, so I was like, uh, I found the dine safe information. So here in Toronto, uh, if you're from out of town, uh, dine safe is basically how uh, restaurants are marked if they're like good or not. Um, did they fail their health inspection? And I was like, cool, I'm gonna make an XML to JSON uh, example of this. I'm gonna pull in all the XML, I'm gonna convert it to JSON and then send it back to you. And then I was like, oh, then I'm gonna have to write like an XML to JSON parser. And I was like, no, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> Uh, I tried it. I tried it for a hot second, and I was like, this is, I, this is too much stress for what I want to do here. So uh, basically, we're going back to Moby Dick here. Uh, <laughs> you can probably see where this is going. Uh, but in this case here, this is my whaler function on the, the front end. So again, we're making a, a response here. We're waiting to fetch, uh, and we're getting a reader from the body. Again, the reader will return a promise when a chunk is available. Uh, once that promise has been resolved, though, we can't keep getting from it. Once a promise is resolved, it's done. So you have to kind of keep returning it. So we have to do this like recursive thing. And this idea is called like you're like pumping the data. So we're just basically pumping this data out until uh, it's done. Uh, you can see in here we say return pump, and then the function pump returns the read dot, uh, reader dot uh, read dot then, uh, and then you can do whatever you want inside of there. In our case, maybe you take uh, your data, you decode it, and you put whale emojis where uh, whale appears. How many people are tired of the whale emoji now? If you're tired of that, I got a great module for you after this. <laughs> Start thinking about what other module would be good for Moby Dick. Um, we have, no, 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 no. <laughs> Come on, Ksenia. <laughs> Writable streams. 
are also a thing you can do in the browser. Uh, so same sort of idea, same exact idea as the writable streams on Node. Uh, in this case, your sync is kind of kind of be up to you. It could be uh, the DOM, it could be another object, something like that. Um, if we wanted to implement a writable stream, uh, you can do this, right? So we, we have our writable uh, class. We can call new writable. And uh, there's a write method we can implement with this. It gets given the chunk and a controller. We can decode as we go. So the chunk uh, in this case, again, is that uh, byte array of information. And just like uh, piping in Node, we can pipe to the writable array. When it's done, so pipe to when it's done will return a promise. Most all things in the browsers these days are promisified. Uh, it will return a promise of when it's done, or if there's an error, you can catch that error and do something with it. It's pretty cool. Transform streams are a little bit uh, different. So transform streams, because this stuff is still so new, not quite implemented yet. Uh, you can kind of implement your own, and I was playing around with this. I'm going to show you a video later uh, where I got this implementation of it. Um, but a transform stream, uh, again, has a readable and a writable endpoint. Uh, so you would have to kind of create your own class with a readable and a writable, one of them being a read stream, one of them being a writable stream. There is some implementation details that are actually missing here. Uh, and when I post my notes, I'll, I'll try to post a gist to maybe like how I implemented this uh, transform stream. Uh, but it is something you can do. I think one of the coolest places this stuff is starting to come up uh, is streams and service workers. Now, I'm not going to show you any code because there's a really, really great video uh, by Jake and uh, Surma uh, from the Supercharge thing. I highly suggest watching this. It's like an hour and 15 minutes or so, but uh, Jake basically live codes using service worker and using streams to uh, get a um, uh, 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 blog page up and running super, super fast. So. Uh, Google's really into this like app shell idea. How many people have heard of this like app shell idea? How many people have heard of service workers actually? How many people have never heard of service workers? Oh, okay, not that many. There was that. There's a couple service uh, progressive web app talks today. But the idea of the app shell is that like what is the the bare bones that should be served up as fast as possible? So like headers and footers and stuff like that. So this is a really great video. Highly suggest you watch it because they actually implement uh, a streaming uh, app shell with blog posts as they come, and it's like super super fast responses. And that's what it's all about in the browser. So uh, all the browser streams, what it's all about is like taking the data and consuming it as quickly as possible and giving the user back some information as quickly as possible. And that's the same sort of idea on uh, the server side, right? Instead of taking you know, a video that's like 100 terabytes, that's a really big video, but <laughs> something so large and kind of compressing it like at one go, that would be sort of ridiculous. But taking chunks of that and compressing it as you kind of like stream the data, that's more manageable. That's more performant. That's a little bit faster for you, right? So again, in the browser, there's not a ton of support yet. It's sort of the Blink family of browsers, so Chrome and Opera at this point. Uh, no WebKit, no Internet Explorer, and no Firefox. Um, yeah, I don't know what actually uh, Edge support is, but I'm probably going to assume maybe not yet. Um, hopefully soon. Uh, so it's still something that's really, really quite new. But now that you have a general understanding of sort of what streams are, hopefully, uh, you can sort of see this stuff working a little bit more as we go. When I post these notes, there'll be tons of resources. There's some really interesting uh, resources on just like uh, uh, some of the core uh, foundational stuff. There is one, again, from Jake Archibald here, uh, 2016 Streams for the Win, a uh, really big blog post on sort of uh, initial thoughts and ideas of how streams could work. Because transform streams aren't around yet, there's even ideas of like what implementations might look like, uh, which is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. But wait, there's one more module. I created boat it <laughs> to go through all of your text and put a boat in everything. I don't know. It was a better joke in my head. Thank you. 